Welcome everybody to the tonight's edition of the David and Chuck Show. Uh, we're going to talk college football or college sports, but in particular college football. We're streaming through some pictures of here of the, the Mountaineers on the Tuscola Mountaineer Network, as well as Enet Sports. Uh, going to talk a little Major League Baseball. Chuck, can you hear me? I and how about those Orioles today? Revenge on the, on the dastardly, to use your word, the dastardly, dastardly Astros. So everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's going on, Chuck? Well, I know our bet is looking good. That's right. I got my hat on. I got my hat. I'm, I'm representing the, the Mighty O's. Yeah, and, you threw it away. Last two games, what happened? <laughs> oh my God! You know, we talked about this before the season started. You know, the folks that listened to us last week, we we went and did a futures bet. And, you know, I'm not the better. I'm not the better. You, you and and a couple of other partners in crime with us are the are the people who know. But you and I met up in Bristol, Virginia, at the Hard Rock Cafe on my way to the auction, and you were up there for family. And uh, before the season started. We put some money on the Orioles and the Braves, a, a futures bet. I didn't even know what that was, so you, you guys taught me. A futures well, bet. It and was it, a money man, so we had to bring huh? you. I just told you your money's going to be you cut out. Say that again. You were the money man. See, we weren't going in oh, this. Oh, Lord, he's, he's buffing. So, anyway, are you there, Chuck? <laughs> Say that again. You cut out. I'm the what? You're the money man. Oh, my God. Well, we're in trouble if I'm the money man. No, you're not. But, but we put some money on the, the Orioles to make the World Series, long shot. And then we put some money on the Braves to make the World Series. Pretty, you know. So, but we make a whole lot more money if the Orioles make the World Series. Right. We make a whole lot more money if the Orioles and the Braves play each other in the World Series. Yeah, we'll and be the, happy. We'll and be again. Postseason, you know, you don't know what happens, and in, in now we're we're getting the dog days of August. But could, would, just tell me the two teams that have the best record in Major League Baseball on August the tenth at seven o two p.m. Well, the one that has the best record is the Atlanta Braves. Oh, whoa, we got that one. And yep. the second best record in baseball is the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, do tell, we got that one too. <laughs> we <laughs> come see us. We will help you any day. Yeah. A it's small percentage. Baseball. Vegas, Dave, and Chuck. That's it. The <laughs> small percentage of your money. And yeah. uh, and before we get into uh, the the landscape of, 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 of college athletics, uh, now Saturday uh, is the premiere of uh, here on our Tuscola Mountaineer Network uh, and, and on all our other streaming uh, places, uh, Enet Sports and, and, and uh, my, my, uh, Crompton's Auto Mart and, and uh, – and a, and a few more uh, is going to be 8 a.m. The premiere of uh, the Jonathan's uh, uh, Tuscola Mountaineer uh, football show, the Jonathan Crompton show. And uh, we're going to have the, the new principal there uh, to uh, to speak before we do anything else. Uh, and then uh, Jonathan and uh, we'll talk about his uh, the season coming up, if you can get anything out of Bill Belichick uh, Jr., uh, that's up to you, Chuck. That is your job. Uh, but uh, everything starts uh, a week from uh, well, the, uh, a week from Saturday, uh, Asheville and Tuscola, and uh, wow, that's a big, big football game to start the season with with the Mountaineers and the Cougars and. And uh, the Mountain Seven Conference is going to be tough. The big, you know, the MAC Conference is going to be tough. A lot of good football in uh, Western North Carolina, and uh, you know, so we, we will see. What, what, what are you thinking here before we get into college sports? Well, I'm I'm thinking that uh, we don't know exactly where you know Tuscola is at. I know that they're. You know, the word is is that uh, you know he's he's happy with their effort and their work and their focus doesn't really translate. But you know, none of these coaches know what they've got until they get into a real game. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of good things right across the county, and then there was a lot of bad things, and not bad, but things that they didn't. You know, 
you. They, they had one. No, they had their scrimmage last night. Right. They had their yeah. last with T.C. Robertson. And okay. uh, Tuscola's goes to uh, Waynesville. I mean, excuse me, to Weaverville tomorrow right. to uh, uh, <laughs> John Taylor. Ch- uh, you're turning me into a, a degenerate gambler, but uh, that's uh, John Taylor. Uh, but uh, I, I, we have to address him as Dr. John Taylor, the National Athletic Director but, of the Year. Absolutely, because you know what? Yeah, he is a. Uh, we're we're lucky he's in our world. Uh, right. We're we're lucky that, that Dr. John Taylor's in our world, and and if we told you uh, what John and people know John, I still get on Janet for calling him Stat Boy. Uh, but it but uh, if 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 people knew what he did for Jonathan in the Tuscola football program uh, uh, since since Jonathan took the job. Uh, it, it, he went above and beyond to try to help them get on a level playing field. So he's at Irvington high school in Irvington, uh, New Jersey. Some of the top athletes in the nation play football for in his program. And uh, his kids are going to Alabama's and Michigan's and uh, Nebraska's and Southern Cal's and Penn state's and, and uh, Clemson's and Tennessee's and Kentucky's. Uh, uh, they, they, they put out great athletes up there, but he has built a culture uh, unlike anything, uh, probably in this country now, uh, you know, I know that you, you, you get on him about the, the girls flag football, but, uh, they are headed to, uh, uh, LA to, uh, play, uh, in, uh, SoFi stadium, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Uh, so again, uh, John, con- congratulations to you. We love you. And, uh, we're, we're going to have you on. Uh, but anyway, uh, the MAC conference is going to be tough as always. I think everything will run through Reynolds. Uh, uh, don't overlook Asheville High. I think uh, a big test is going to be uh, next Friday night for for the Mountaineers against uh, arguably one of the better football teams in the mountains in the Asheville High Cougars. Uh, uh, Irwin, you know, I'm all, I'm partial to the Warriors. I always want the Warriors to do well because uh, I am one. So. Uh, you know, so anyway, uh, Chucky, before we leave tonight, uh, there is a segment of the show, uh, that, that, uh, and I have no idea what, what you're going to talk about, but you, you have inside information from people, uh, and we're going to start having a segment every, every time we have a show, it's, uh, Chuck's is, you know, just, I don't know, whatever, what do you want to call it? I, I call it the Inside information nobody trading. else has. I'm trading information, so we'll call it insider trading. The insider trading, because uh, and it, it, and it could be from the pros all the way down to the high schools and everything in between, because I know that that you are constantly getting contact contacted by people that you've dealt with in your long career as a sports editor that keep continue to keep you on the inside. Uh, uh, you knew things uh, back in uh, November, December, January, and February that nobody else knew. I'll just leave it. How, how, can I leave it at that? Yeah. Because people were calling me and saying, you know stuff. And I'm going, I know nothing. I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to survive. You come buy a car from me. And by the way, this is sponsored by, by Crompton's Auto Mart, CromptonAuto.com. Come see us. We, uh, uh, we need to sell a car, too. Uh, you know, Janet needs a new pair of shoes and a pocketbook. There you go. <laughs> All right. There you go. There we go. The state of college football or college athletics. Mm-hmm. When we last spoke, we 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 talked about the demise of the Pac-12, and they, at that point, they were down to four. Correct. Correct. You had Arizona. Arizona State and Utah make uh, overtures and apply for application to the Big 12. Yep. That happened. You had Oregon and Washington accepting uh, the invitation to join the Big 10. That happened. Then you had two couple of days, three, four days went by, and all of a sudden we started getting wind from sources that 
the ACC, before it was made public, the ACC was going after two people to join. We, you know, our first thoughts were West Virginia, Connecticut. I mean, what teams are they going to go after? Yeah. And all of a the word came out, Cal and Stanford. And we just, yeah, I mean, you know, it's yeah. nice to get out there to the, to the San Francisco Bay and look out over the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, wait a minute. That's the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> what are we doing? What is the ACC doing? Thank goodness, last night the uh, ACC presidents got involved and the deal is dead. They just well, said, with what is coming back, they don't think, you, when they tell you, well, we don't think this is uh, going to happen because we are in return, we're not getting in return benefits and we just don't think this is the workable deal. To me, that's language is this thing. Yeah. That's me. No, well, I will tell you that I, I agree with what you're saying, but now I'm sitting here looking. Something happened. There's another last. Cool. Something happened last night with the, with the Cal and and in the Stanford thing. Uh, what is this mm -hmm. talking about? Uh, I just saw this. This just popped up. Uh, the Mountain West Conference awaits the ACC de decisions. Oh, Cal. As Stanford and Cal await a definite decision from the ACC about possible membership, the Mountain West Conference remains on standby. Now, my question to you is this. How, I, I'm going to make a statement with a question. Okay. There's no way on earth that Cal, Stanford, Wazoo, and, and, uh, uh, and Oregon State are leaving Power 5 football. I don't see you. They can't do it. There's, there, it's, I don't see it. The Mountain West is not a Power Five conference. I just don't think that's a possibility. I would go. Would you go independent before you would go drop down? But, but anyway, I, I say that statement slash question. You tell me what you think if if I'm wrong or right, and what you see happening with Cal and Stanford, and boy, Wazoo is in in a tough tough spot I could Oregon see, State is in a yeah. tough tough spot I could see Oregon State and uh, Washington State making that decision to go into the Mountain West as a matter of fact you and I in discussion about a week ago were sitting there thinking well uh, we included Cal and Stanford although it seemed strange but here's the thing about Cal and Stanford I was reading this today, and it was an evaluation of the 15 worst teams in college football, D1 football. The worst team in Power 5 football is Stanford. They've lost numerous uh, tra uh, to transfers. Their team, they've, you know, they parted ways with their new coach. The new coach is coming in, going from that pro offense to uh, a more college, upbeat tempo um, scheme of things and Cal's right behind them. So Cal and Stanford by their own demise, their programs are in troubled waters. So you, what, do you, what are your options? You have to look at what are your options? Do you make applications to the big 12? All right. That's a lot of travel, but much so with the ACC. Um, or do and you, it's not just football. Football is the easy travel compared to everybody else, correct? Right. I mean, from baseball standpoint, Stanford, I mean, if you picked up Stanford, you're picking up a gem right there. Kel's, Kel's got a, a rising basketball program, but, you know, they just, uh, as as of now, you know, the ACC looks like a, a dead deal just by words by everybody involved you know you know it's not the return that we expect and and it just doesn't make any sense and the uh the acc presidents made those that decision so i think it's a desperate move but you got to be a part of a conference now will cal and stanford upgrade the mountain west i don't in football i don't know you know will, will they stay a group five will they maybe be six I mean, they replaced the Pac-12. That's gone. So, it, you know, right now it's a Power Four conference. 
you know, situation because the Pac-12 is done. Do you see any way that Cal and Stanford end up in the SEC? No. Academically, you don't think the SEC would go, look what we have? No. There's schools, there's schools that they can pull to join uh, the SEC, and two of them are in uh, the ACC, and there's two of them that are in Texas and one in Oklahoma that they could pull and they could be better football programs. That's what drives the SEC. And I asked this question, and I don't have an answer to it, but I'm wondering why is the ACC now making overtures, strange as they are, and I'll give you another school there that was talked about, SMU, the ACC exploring SMU coming into uh, the ACC. So they're looking west. Why are they doing this? Unless, could it be that the ACC is aware there is a strong possibility they will lose Clemson and Florida State? And they got to have a plan B. They don't want to be caught, you know, with no teams and having to scramble. So I think they were trying to be proactive, although I don't think that it, you know, it was a workable uh, deal because you're going out west, far west, and that's not fair, you know, because that's a lot of travel for Stanford. It. Yep, it's a, it, it most certainly is. And then I go back, I regressed back to when you talk about Clemson and Florida State. It's a natural fit for them to be in the SEC, especially in football. Uh, you know, not as much baseball. But again, we you, we had a, a pretty heated debate one night about this. Is is I th- and we all agree the SEC in baseball was a step above. But I will tell you that I believe that the ACC is that far. Close. It's a conference, yeah, baseball con- wise. And and but but strictly with football. Clemson, no, not Florida State anymore, but Clemson, pretty much every year is going to compete for the ACC championship. Right. And therefore, even with the, you know, when it's expanded, they're pretty much guaranteed a spot in the playoffs every year if they stay in the ACC. If you go to the SEC, it's a different, and, and again, we've we've had very heated debates about this. And and if people could could have heard and read what you and Jonathan, man, it was brutal. Jonathan was just so angry at you at that one point. It is I know if I was- you're Clemson, I'm, and again, I am talking about anything else but but football here. If the is it worth four or five million dollars extra a year if that's the numbers they're talking about to go in there and compete with Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, LSU, Auburn? Uh, uh, I mean, just South. Listen, South. I, I am not a Gamecock fan. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I pull for our, our, our guys in the SEC, but but hey, this guy down here is going to do a really good job in Columbia. I don't think he's using it as a stepping stone because he could have already left and gone home to Virginia Tech and he stayed. The the SEC is a different animal on Saturdays. You know, we might have a team here or there, a Clemson here or there, in Ohio State and Michigan and maybe, maybe Southern Cal. But now you've added Oklahoma. Now you've added Texas. And I think those two guys are fixing to learn. A, they're going to learn a lesson. They're going to learn a lesson. This is not the Big 12. Every, this is a different animal. And, and, and I know that the Big 10 is, is that everything that they do is to get there on Saturdays with the SEC. And they've made a heck of a jump in the last 24 months. And I yeah. think we can all agree with that. But I but agree with your assessment on the Big Ten, uh, and they just come over here is open to everything. Mountain West Moles next move with Stanford and Cal, which you have. Yeah, yep. but but no, let me stay 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 with me on the Clemson thing going right. to the SEC. So here's the thing: is that Clemson's success has because of their dominance in the ACC. 
And they've had, you know, they have dominated the ACC, just plain and simple. If Clemson moves to uh, the SEC, they become a part of the the most dominant conference in all sports, but, you know, overall, but also particularly on football. Besides the NFL. They, but they don't dominate. And you, so do you get that money, that extra money, but you no longer are in consideration? Because – you get one loss in the SEC if you don't have the gravitas of like an Alabama or Georgia, you're done. You got one yeah, loss, but, you're done. Yep. You and know? again, because I will say this, and, and and is there a little prejudice there on my part? Probably. The second at the worst, third best team in the nation last year was in Knoxville, but they lost. They lost a game and they were they said Hey, we love you. We hate it for you. You're not in. You're not coming in. Now, if that had been, you know, a, a, a Georgia, and like you said, probably. And it, but, but, uh, you know, when rotating that stuff back to Clemson, uh, when you've got to compete in the living room, then the now you're going to be in the same conference with the Tide with the War Eagles, with the Vols, with the Gamecocks, with the Gators, with the Bulldogs, uh, you know, with, with the Sooners now, with, with the, the Longhorns, whatever those, those that other ugly T is down there. Uh, and listen, I'm very prejudiced in this. Don't overlook Lane. Don't overlook Lane. And absolutely never forget about LSU. You know, uh, Coach O is, you know, Coach Joe, he's <laughs> he's relaxing somewhere on that eighteen yeah. twenty million dollars, but 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 don't ever. I mean, it, there there's nothing every Saturday. Even if you go, you know, they talk about you used to. You could go to Kentucky. You go to Kentucky, you might win the football game. You're gonna get your butt kicked. He Stoops, had, you know, he's got great athletes that play hard. It, it but, is just a different animal. The way I look at Clemson, Florida State, is I look at Clemson and say, okay, Clemson versus – they'd be coming into the east, okay? If they came in, they would keep – because of Texas and Oklahoma, they'd keep Alabama and Auburn into the west. And then Florida State and um, Clemson would stay, you know, would join the east. So if you go in the east, you got Clemson versus Kentucky. I think Clemson's a better football program than Kentucky. Clemson yeah. versus Clemson versus Tennessee, you know that's all vowels. I think, but you, you had know, to say that because because I was going to come down there, you know, like slice your yeah. tires or something. Well, like you know, <laughs> but, but you know there could be those yeah. times up that you know Clemson could be better. Yeah, Clemson versus Vanderbilt. So there's two. They're better than Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Then you go down to Clemson versus Georgia. Okay, they don't they they can compete like they did in the you know at the beginning of the season yeah. three years ago. But that Georgia didn't have that Clemson team. And, and Georgia, yeah, yeah. And Clemson and Florida. See, and here's the thing: you're playing them in consecutive order. You're playing these teams. South Carolina, I think South Carolina put the put the whipping on them at last year at the end of the season in their and there's a uh, Palmetto rivalry. So. There are four teams Clemson, I don't think, can beat just in the division, East Division. So now you're going to play three teams, and what if that draw is that they go and play Alabama, LSU, and Arkansas? Now you're starting to look at Clemson with five losses or four, five or six losses, you know, and going to play them not in – you know, Death Valley, but into, you know, going to play over in, in Tuscaloosa. I just don't – that's at Clemson. Florida State, look, last two years, the Demon Deacons put the whipping on Florida State. So all of a sudden, Florida State's this magical return. I, 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 where'd that happen? So I don't know yeah. neither team, quite frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm talking real stuff here. I don't think Clemson and Florida State would manage uh, would be middle of the pack in football. They'll win some, and they'll lose some. But again, 
Clemson right now thinks national championship. They join the SEC, they think of trying to win a division. It, they shrink. They come back. So I think the bottom line is, is I don't think, like I said before, I don't think Clemson and Florida State will make that move because they like the position in the iron. And if they could get into the Final Four, oh, and we change next year to what is it, eight? Eight. Right. Yeah. So you expand to eight, that you might get a shot at having a postseason run at a national championship. Yeah, because all you have to do is get in. If you're in, you have a chance. Right. But if they join the SEC, there's there's like six teams that they're that have a better shot than that. So I just don't see them going. But I want to know what the and I'm trying to find that out is I want to know the motivation between the ACC. Is it just trying to expand? Or is it literally uh, they're they're thinking that they may be losing two, and the only two that they lose is going to be Clemson and Florida State. Florida State. We'll see. We'll see yeah. how. They- yeah. Okay. On to baseball. The Mighty O's. Oh, hold on before we go. Mm-hmm. John Taylor, who John Taylor, who we respect more than anybody. I don't see the ACC presidents wanting Stanford and Cal. Yes, they're great academic institutions. Yes, their Olympic sports programs would improve the quality of the ACC quality of play, but they won't generate the kind of revenue for the conference that makes a sound financial investment for revenue sharing. The Mountain West Conference could only provide $3.5 million a year for each school uh, in, in, uh, in media rights. Cal and Stanford would probably go independent before they would do that. And I, and I totally believe that. Uh, outside of two, uh, and then he goes outside the box thinking. I think in two years, I, I think that uh, uh, Oregon State should look into the Big West for their other sports except for football. They are highly competitive in all their Olympic sports and baseball programs in that conference. Oregon State would be a good fit, except for football. Now, could these schools, now, and I don't know, could Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, Wazoo, team with Notre Dame as national independents? Before that, you know, I know we were going to leave college football or college sports, but is that a possibility? Well, I don't, I don't think so. And the reason why I don't think that is because everybody's now with the motivation to having a shot at a national championship. If you go national independence, who are you playing? Who are you going to play? Because now you've got still got that committee that'll look at and go, well. Oregon State or Washington State or Stanford was undefeated, but they, you know, they didn't play anybody. Their, you know, their strength of schedule is at the bottom. Notre Dame, same way, at the bottom. Notre Dame, if you're independent and you take one loss, you, you're at the, do I play a cupcake schedule and go undefeated and not make it because I had played a cup, cupcake schedule? Or do I take the chance and play somebody as an independent because one loss, you're done. And everybody else is thinking national championship and you're thinking to playing 12 games in a bowl game. So I just don't see the the marriage there. I I, I still believe that Stanford, Washington State, and Oregon the State. The sound you hear is uh, my, the sound up. that you hear is my beautiful Janet uh, with a big knife in her hand uh, stabbing ice. Oh. So at least it's not me, but, but, uh, John Taylor and John Taylor said they'd have to rely uh, on their opportunities and or their opponents and opponents TV deals. Those schools aren't going to get the revenue as an independent like Notre Dame. And I agree with that. Right. Uh, so, right. you know, we'll, this, this next week, uh, we might have a little more clarity when, when we do this next week, we, we can have a little more clarity into the world of college athletics, but, uh, you know, uh, these, these non-football schools, that's, you know, if you're a, a, you're a basketball program and you're, you're, a, you're a Southern Cal program and you've got to go play in Rutgers Here's on a the- Wednesday 
and you go play the basketball game and then you got to get on a plane, you got to get back and you got to be in class. Are we still going to class, Chuck? No. Don't. Are we really college athletes anymore? On an NIL deal and then you tell them, make sure you go to class. Make sure you go to class. Uh, no. There, there, there's no class any longer. That is That went out when the NIL officially came in. You know, you just can't. You, I, I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but it is what it is. But yeah. All right, baseball, mm-hmm. major league baseball, and let me let me pull up our little deal here, and uh, what is that? Would you, cha-ching again? Cha-ching. I, I, I'm I, I'm hoping we don't have a big collapse, but uh, let me let me pull up the standings here real quick, and then. Uh, Baltimore is uh, uh, seven and three in their last ten. They are uh, in first place over the, the Rays by two and a half games. Uh, seven over the Jays, eleven and a half over the Red Sox, and twelve over the Yankees. Who's the manager of the New York Yankees come spring training 2024? <laughs> and, and, and look, and I and I ask that, and it's a serious question, and I will tell you, right. I like Aaron Boone. I'll say that loudly. I like Aaron Boone. But if, if it's not Aaron Boone, who I still think Aaron Boone will be the manager, but if not Aaron Boone, I think your guy, Donnie Baseball, will be the new manager of the New York Yankees. I, I agree with that. If Boone is fired, I think they go get Donnie Baseball. He comes home. And but you know again all this team is not uh, Aaron Boone's problem. This is a no. general manager. Yeah, this is not his problem. But he's going to be the fall guy, and I just think that he's done. And and I think he might want to be done. Right. And and to find another job, uh, somebody's going to snatch him up quickly. Right. Well, uh, but old but Donnie, and they just get injured easily. Yeah. You know, Rizzo did the IL because of a collision he had with Tatis back in May. At the end of May, I'm like, wait, we went through June and July, and he's going on the IL just now? He he hasn't been right? What's going on? It's Stratton. Stratton, Yeah, $35 million a year for a 195 hitter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything that Cashman did is backfiring. And, and it's Ben Boone that's just holding them together. They're lucky they're 12 and a half games back. They could be more. Yeah, because they're still three games over. Uh, they If they were in the American League Central, they'd be a half game out of first place. Right. Uh, but, uh, well, we, we have to talk about the collapse of the I'm all in. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Uh Los Angeles, California, Anaheim, something, something, Angels. Right. Uh, man, I mean, the owner decided that instead of getting a massive return for Shohei Otani, he was going to keep him, and they were going to compete for a playoff spot, and then they lost eight in a row right after the deadline, and they're pretty much done. Uh, ten and a half out of uh, the division, six and a half out of the wild card and uh, uh, the Seattle Mariners are just rolling. And uh, uh, I don't see any way that the angels uh, are going to, I don't think they're going to, I don't see them making the playoffs trout. I don't know if we're going to see him play again this year. And uh, Otani is going to be a Los Angeles Dodger, man. I just think I know it all. Well, I mean that, that all could be possible. Now I don't agree. I just uh, that could be possible. Uh, you know, you can't. No, get, I don't. Let me first of all. Let me deal with the Otani trade. I I went. Uh, you brought to me Otani's WAR, wins above replacement. That's a new fangled statistic. Yeah, I don't know what it means. Accurate measurement about the higher that number, the more valuable they are. Because if if you're going to replacement replace him you got to find somebody with an equal war wins above replacement so Otani's pitching and hitting 
is now up to 7.7. Okay, his wins above replacement is 7.7. Generational player. So I went to the Los Angeles Dodgers, and this is what happened when they were opening up and talking about, let's trade. Let me hear what your offers are. If you're going to make a trade with the Los Angeles Dodgers for Otani, you would, you, if you put up Freddie Freeman and Clayton Kershaw, who are older players in Otani, okay, or Mookie Betts, you would have a 7.7 Otani war, wins above replacement compared to a 7.8. And the first thing you would say is, well, if I get rid of Freddie Freeman and uh, Clayton Kershaw, I'm the bulk of my team. But their wars combined equals 7.8. Otani's well, but, 7. Yeah. But, and I would say this. I'm, and, and we, again, we had long discussions about this. Right. If I'm the Dodgers and and you don't take what I want to give you for him, right? That's okay. I'll wait. The season ends. He's coming to law. He's 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 going 35 miles down the interstate. He has no choice. Well, the choice is is that uh, I read an article that Artie Marino is going to make a contract offer that is so high that no other team can match it. The Dodgers are have got huge payrolls and Mookie. Uh, Freddie Freeman, Clayton Kershaw, and a bunch of those pitchers, uh, Bueller. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other kid, but um, yeah. they got rid of Bellinger. But they they have a huge bulk of their they they would uh, would not have the money for a tiny. So pay taxes. He's going to make an offer to him. But it's also got to be based on you can't do it yourself. You got to have Trout. You're doing. We're struggling right now without Trout. If we get Trout back, we have a shot. But I will continue to go and try and build this team. He will say that every year. Well, he's still at you know he's still at uh, Los Angeles. If he wanted to trade him and get a massive load, he should have done it last year. Like I said, that was when he should have unloaded Trout and. Otani and got 10 players in return to build your team. But Otani's come back with a vengeance and everybody's now saying, well, okay, he's a generational player. Just remember now he doesn't well, play. He is. Well, he plays two, two, you know, goes two ways. He goes uh, DH, he hits and he pitches, but he never plays defense. He never puts his glove on to go play defense. Trout plays defense nine innings. Every game he's out there in the outfield, you know, running down flies. He defense hits, and so he's a two way guy. So I mean, but Otani's value is up to seven point seven. Give me an equal value in return, and nobody was giving it to him. There well, were two way. And, and again, that 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 is with with him at this stage. Last year was different, and you're correct. Last year would have been the seller's market for them. Right. This year. Because they waited, it's a buyer's market, and and everybody said, "Hey, okay, not a problem, not a problem." Because we're going to offer them when the season's over. And you, you, you're and, the gem of the Angels, David. Yep. And you said you looked at the deals that they offered you, and you said, "Y'all crazy? <laughs> There's no way." So when you turn down those offers and make no trade. You're going to Otani saying, "I'm gonna break the bank. They're gonna, I'm gonna. It's gonna take ten. Bring you know, bring trucks in here. You're gonna make an offer. He can't refuse. Correct? Absolutely. You, you have no choice. Right. You have no choice. So if it's about money, then you know Otani. You know, once he gives him that offer, every offer that comes in lower than that is secondary. I mean, it's just it's. It's non-existent because he's going to turn he's going to turn down that historic contract to go play with the team that right now is second has a chance to make it, but or could he stay there with Artie Marino, who's given in the end everything in sp- pro sports is this it's money that's what oh, drives. Yeah. But but again for him. He's going to get the highest contract ever given. Right. Uh, there's no there's no doubt about that. Uh, I think 
I think that he, regardless of what contract he signs, it's going to be the biggest in baseball ever. But if you know, if you if you go to a team like the Yankees or if he goes to a team like the Dodgers, and I don't think he's a Yankee guy, and he's just he's just not. But if he goes to the Dodgers now, you've got all the other things as well as the baseball. You know what I mean? You've got everything. Uh, he, he's staying on the West Coast, according to him. He's staying on the West Coast. Yeah. So you look at San Diego, huge contracts in about five players. You got L.A. You got four big contracts out there for L.A. You got Trout with a big contract, and then you got Otani, who's about ready to get a record amount. And everybody else, they don't have them big contracts at L.A. Angels. Then you got up in the Bay Area, you got Oakland that doesn't have any money. They're going to Las Vegas. And then you got the San Francisco Giants. He's not going there. I don't know what the what the finance of the of the Giants. And then you got up the road, you got the Seattle Mariners. That's the only other team. Somebody's gonna have to beat Artie Marino and it. I heard figures like sixty million dollars a year. Uh, I, that's, I, I've heard that it, it, it could be the the total could be one with a B. Now. I, I, you know, when he was in Japan, it, when he was in Japan, he pitched, batted, and played right field. He was by far, by far the best outfielder in, in, in Nippon baseball. Not even close. Do you get him and go, man, let's just play the field and, 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 and not pitch? Do you get him and continue to do what what the Angels are doing now? Uh, I, you know, those are questions that I think have to be asked as he gets into his 30s. But but but, and again, we sometimes you know, and I've, I've in our group text, uh, I've I've texted Jonathan and said, why does Chuck hate this guy? I don't understand. Why does he hate this guy? Because he does everything the right way. He shows up every day. He's a dirt bag. He's a gamer. He's a yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Thank you. And plays the game the way that almost, well, everybody on the planet goes, God. Because like the other night, I think, when is it, was it he hit 40? Was it his 40th he hit? Right. And they just played it with the sound mm-hmm. of the ball hitting the bat. And it's, uh, I, I remember going to Atlanta when I was young and, and got there early, you know, back when you could do those things and, uh, and watching the Braves, it was just a kid with some pe- people. We took a trip and the Braves were taking BP and Murphy was crushing them and all these things were, cr- and then, and then Bob Horner got in a batting cage and when he hit the ball, it was different. It was just different. The sound was different. And every time this guy hits the baseball, you don't even have to know. You could close your eyes and go, that was Otani that's hit that ball. He's just different. And and he represents the game not only in his country, but but in our country and around the world. I think the way you're, an athlete's supposed to be. And I, I you know, I, I think it's just – Again, I, I, I don't give a lot of praise to these younger guys anymore. I, I don't like the way they play the game. I don't like the way they carry themselves. Uh, can't stand it. But, man, this guy, when I say to myself, uh, man, he could have played on my Orioles teams when I was a kid, and he would have fit in, and he would have been a great teammate, and Earl would have loved him. Or he could have played for Dick with those uh, Dick Williams on those A's teams, even though those A's teams were crazy, but he could have played with them because he plays the game hard every second. You ever seen him run out of ground ball? Well, yes, I, I've, I've watched him play. He's a generational player. I don't know if he could play for the old school guys. I'll tell you what I've seen. I've seen for two years manipulation of the rotation 
to where he doesn't have to pitch against the better, you know, a, a real strong team or a hot team. They move him to where they, you know, it's like just recently when they were playing the last day in uh, Atlanta, afternoon game, six man rotation. It's his day. Miles, yeah, was, I, I, I can't remember who they played the next day. They, uh, who did they play the ne- Who did they play the next day, Chuck? Seattle, I think it was. Yeah. Well, that's the hottest team in baseball. Right. Well, at that time, uh, they were five, you know, won five straight. But, and they, and uh, Lucas Giolito was the guy who was pitching, you know, Otani through, and then they put uh, Giolito behind him. So when it come that final game, getaway day, they put Giolito in there, and that's when Atlanta just went off for 18 runs again. I mean, they were getting bombs everywhere. They moved Giolito up and pushed Otani back so he didn't have to face Atlanta. That's happened numerous times. I don't like that. If he's that true, you know, that true competitor, give him give him the ball. Hand him the ball. Here it is. The old school guys is, here's your ball. Well, I don't think I want to pitch against this team today. See, that's not old school. That's his new school with Otani. He is a generational player. But bottom line, We've discussed that. Yeah. That he, he's, he stays a, uh, angels because of the money. Okay. I mean, we will see. Now, we, didn't, we, we, didn't, we, we don't have time to get into the National League besides the fact that Braves are in first place. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Uh, Chuck, it's time. I don't know what you're fixing to say. Okay. But, oh, my goodness. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I don't know for sure exactly what it was, but my wife said something on on Facebook, and Robert Redford said he said he gave her a heart and, and told Janet how sweet that was. So who? You know, Robert Redford. She's all fired up over here. So anyway, uh, he's too Janet. You can't leave me for him. <laughs> My wife wants me to grow grow back my uh, my beard, but have it trimmed like Sean Connery. And I said, "Well, like who?" And she said, "Sean Connery." And I went, "Well, you got a thing for Sean Connery?" She said, "Well, yeah." He's James Bond, man. He's yeah. James Bond. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyway, all right, it's time. Are it's you not ready? A, you want to trade some information? Dave Clawson. Uh, he had there's a story six, there. I Wake Forest had six players. They say between six and eight, but it was six players receive a phone call from various schools, and some of them were ACC schools, and offered them between a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to five hundred thousand dollars just to come to their school. They weren't in the portal. These guys were posted off of Dave Clawson's roster. So there was, little birdie told me, there was a major, major confrontation of the entire conference, ADs, head coaches. They named names. They showed the evidence. They they had affidavits. And all I know is is that it was a bang-up job right before the AC, ACC media where – supposedly this will never happen again or some serious conf- you know, uh, ramifications are, would come down through the pipeline. And Clawson's sitting there just a grin. But, I mean, this is what you get when you start paying players NIL and then all of a sudden you give the checkbook to the coaches and then they, look, I want that quarterback. I wonder how much Notre Dame paid for that, that kid, that you know, um, Hartman, that went to Notre Dame. Now, Clawson had the classiest act, you know, response to that. And he said, this kid was in our, our our system for five years. And we appreciate everything he did. He set records and everything. He wants to go to the NFL. And he felt going to Notre Dame would help him go to the NFL. He, We said goodbye and thank you for your service. But, you know, going to go call players that are not even enter- entertaining the transfer portal. The good thing is those quality High character guys at Wake Forest went immediately to Dave Clawson and said, "This is not legal." 
So that is on the table. And then Texas A&M has just ended uh, the program that would have given donors who donate to the NIL, they get free tickets. They're no longer going to give them free tickets. So that's a step back from when, you know, the uh, Jimbo was a little arrogant last year, but we did nothing wrong. We're wide ending that program. Okay. And, and, and I like Jimbo. Right. I mean, I don't know. I liked him, you know, not nearly years ago when he was, when he, when he right. was up here and right. stuff, but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. We talked about the Cal Stanford. Hold on. You got, so while well, Chuck's camera reboots, uh, we're going to have to get Chuck to get on a, a, a a computer. All right, start start that over again, Chuck. You cut out. Okay. Instead, we've already talked about the AC courting um, Stanford, Cal, and yep. SMU. But our guy, we loved this guy when he was in the SEC. Derek Mason, former uh, Vanderbilt head. Heck yeah. He spent two seasons as a defensive coordinator, one at Auburn, and then just recently at Oklahoma State. Well, he stepped down from the Oklahoma State, and he's back in the SEC. He's got a new gig. He is going to be an SEC analyst on the SEC. Can oh, you my goodness. He'll do a great job. Oh, he'll be dressed as the nines on that show. But that is something to look forward to is Derek Mason being an SEC, SEC analyst on the SEC network. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, – you know, in the last few years, I truly, on a personal note, I have give a crap less about who won or lost any football game anywhere. You know, now we now come when it came near the playoffs in the last few years. Again, I think we have great debate and great discussion about the the playoffs. And when Jonathan found that site last year that started breaking things down. I remember it was like three 30 or four o'clock in the morning and we were texting this thing back and forth because it's a live thing. That's talking about the strength of schedule and you know, the, I mean the whole nine yards and that, that's a pretty, pretty cool thing. And, and we were pretty dead on at the end on who was going to get where. And that's about the only time that I really cared. Well, uh, the only thing that uh, it, it had Alabama, Rightfully so. I'll admit that. I love Alabama, but. Uh, oh, no, God, don't say that to me. I love Tennessee because of Johnson. Oh, God. Now, Johnson wasn't part of Tennessee. I would not like Tennessee. They got the craziest fans. But Alabama, they we had that thing had Alabama as the fourth team and they put Ohio State. And I just. I, yeah. I, like it at the end, but Ohio State represented it well against Georgia in that final game. A field yeah. goal away that a field goal made, and they could have upset Georgia. So, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, we're not going to talk about college football. We're not going to talk about Major League Baseball. We're not going to talk about anything but the Tuscola football Mountaineers. Got and. It. Uh, I know that, that you are digging deep in to, uh, to get the information out. So you, you know, I know you, it's, it, this is going to be good. I'm going to be almost like the referee. You are going to dig for the information. My, my beloved son, who is basically a CIA agent in a, in a football, on a football field is going to try to Belichick you and everybody else. And, and how, uh, Jonathan, tell me about the game Friday night. And he will tell you in the greatest political speak you've ever heard. Right. And then you're going to dig. And then he, and he's going to say, well, how did you come out injury wise? Well, we're good. If you could send me a picture of Jim, <laughs> because, you know, if this was the picture and he starts, when I ask a question, he starts to answer. I'm going to raise up that picture of his mama. And put it right <laughs> on my face and say, you're talking to your mama now. And and, and I think the great thing is, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the games and we're going to talk about the, the season and, and where everybody is. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, they're going to have a great year. But again, they were uh, I, I'm not an, an excuse guy. But they were four months behind. 
and 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 in most of these guys, all of these guys' career, they were learning a certain form of algebra. Jonathan is teaching geometry, a different a different math. Yeah, and it's just yeah. it, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying it's different. Everything for these kids is new. Right. And uh, but I will say this: I'm not. Uh, owning my own business is very stressful, but some, you know, I get to do certain things and, and yesterday, like yesterday, I had to go to the bank and make a little deposit. And instead of coming straight back to the office, I drove by and sat there and watched about six minutes because of time. And these kids are working their tail off. Uh, I mean, just, they have bought in to, to, to the culture, uh, and, and, I hope it produces wins, right. uh, but I know this: they're going. They are great young men, and that that Jonathan and that staff and the, and the people that he is surrounding those kids with, uh, this is bigger than football games. I have to say uh, one so, thing: uh, is Jonathan loves his kids. Loves talking about his kids. But when we come onto the show Saturday morning at eight o'clock, he is going, he will not be talking about the individuals or what he expects or anything. Cause he's got a game, the opener against Asheville that following Friday night. Yeah. But now once he plays Asheville, yeah. Uh, Johnson will open up. And yeah. Talk about his, but he is going to be tight lipped and holding it close to his vest. And it's going to be, <laughs> understand it. It's just, frustrating trying to do a show but i get it yeah so, the preseason about the team not so much about the kids until after Asheville. yeah and 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 again i, I cannot emphasize it to you enough into the into all everyone listening here at the uh, tuscola mountaineer network or the tuscola football network on enet sports or any other place that you're listening to us they, they this is uh, how do I say this? He's he and this program are building for the long haul. Right. This is not just week one Asheville, and week one Asheville is 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 in his eyes as many big games as he's been in in his life. This is Friday against Nashville High for him is the biggest game in his life. Right. And I can sense it. I mean, when you're around him, it is, he is as intense as, you know, I know you remember, I know you remember the locker room uh, uh, when he came, when you saw him in the locker room, when he came off the field as a freshman against LSU and played his ass off. And I remember you coming out of that thing and going, man, I've known him for a long time. The, the, he is I've never seen that look in his eyes uh, his kids just being around him they have that look they have that look remember I said Jonathan Crompton beat LSU but yeah but, but just, LSU beat Tennessee but he fumbled hey look, look bottom line can we end it this way yes question one question to you what kind of cars you got out there on your lot? Okay. Oh, God. See, I, now you, you've made me breathe again. I get so intense, I'm ready to break <laughs> something. Hey, look, honestly, uh, we've got vans, we've got SUVs, we've got trucks. But but here's the deal. If you drive by and you don't see it, don't worry. Just come inside and go, this is what I want. We'll go get it. Got it. And we'll find it. And... uh uh, and, and I'll tell you this, if you're listening right now, I am looking, Chuck, I am looking for a salesperson. I need somebody to come in there that can treat people uh, well, understand uh, the core of what my values, what we talk about every day. And and I'm looking for a salesman so, so I can get freed up to get back on the road to fill that lot up. So if you if you're looking for something and you're uh, and you're and you uh, want to make some money and you want to talk, come see me, and uh, and uh, let's see if we can't make something happen and, and take care of uh, 
take care of some things. Also, before we go, next Friday, I'll be I'll get down to the shop uh, at about uh, midnight, and I'm going to start cooking for the tailgate that we're going to have down at the shop. Hopefully, people can you know if you if you come by and you stay for five minutes or you stay all day until we leave to go to the ball game, uh, we're going to have uh, pork shoulder. Uh, we're going to have Janet. We're going to have potato salad, honey. We're going to have some potato salad, baked beans, chips, drinks, uh, good conversation, and uh, barrel out of there and head towards uh, CE Weatherby Stadium to see the Mountaineers and the Cougars. So every every Friday is big tailgate, home or away games down at, down at the shop. So we have a whole lot going on. Uh, look forward to, to uh, having a big audience on Saturday morning. Hopefully, we're going to have a big, big audience and uh, promote these kids, promote this program, promote our community. And uh, I can't think of a better partner to have than uh, than uh, putting putting the band back together. And uh, and and I will say this: he was insistent on you and, and me doing what we did all those years. Absolutely. So, well, so anyway, see you next time. See you next time. Root for the Orioles. Root for the Braves. Hope college football or college athletics doesn't collapse. We'll see you Saturday for the premiere of the Jonathan Crompton Show featuring Tuscola Mountaineers football here on the Tuscola Mountaineer Network. Have a great night, everybody. See you, Chucky. All right.